Good morning, everybody, and what a good morning it is. Today, the road to LGM continues. Uh, we had two rated Div 1 rounds recently. Haven't made a video for either of them, but I haven't eaten since, like, several hours ago this morning, um, and I'm starving. So I'm going to go get some Qdoba to celebrate, and in the meantime, we can take a look at what happened in the past two Div 1 rounds. Here we go. All right, so question number one, why do we not have screencasts of all these rounds? Well, the answer is because in the past five days, we have had four Code Forces rounds. We've had a Div 1, uh, we've had an educational round, we've had a Div 4, yes, Div 4. Great video on that, that one was fun. And we've also had this Global Round 20, which just showed up. Um, of those, only two of them were rated. That was the Div 1 and the Global Round. And the Div 1, I did really badly on. Uh, I only got A and C, took a long time, and when getting C, uh, my initial approach wasn't even right. So, yeah, that was not, not a good contest for me. And I figured that, like, since I couldn't even figure out B, me explaining the solutions would just not be helpful. Um, so I did record a screencast, but I just chose not to publish it. And for this global round, well, that's, that's quite the story. Usually, Code Forces rounds start at 7.35, my time, 7.35 a.m. Uh, this one was half an hour early, so it started at 7.05. Now, every day, I'll wake up at 6.30, go for a couple mile run, and then I'll do the Code Forces contest after, from like 7.30 to 9.30. Well, since this one started at 7, I didn't actually join the contest until like half an hour in. And it wasn't because like I had intended to do that, uh, I just didn't realize that it started early. So when I sat down at my computer at like 7.30, like five minutes before I thought the contest would start, we had already <laughs> began 25 minutes of it. So I'm like, well, I probably won't compete, but I'll record this just in case. And then, uh, yeah, I just decided, what's the worst that can happen? My rating would go down a little bit. I'm already not red. I don't have anything to lose. Let's just go for it. One of the best deltas in my life, you know, so... Very glad I did that. <laughs> all right, all right, enough talk. I'm starving. Let's go get some food. Get over time. So I'm gonna enjoy this burrito, but in the meantime, you can check out these highlights of the parts that I did record. It was a lot of editing, but enjoy. I'm the coolest person I know. We are starting this contest half an hour late, because I thought I started at the normal time, but it didn't. So let's crush it. Let's be, can we turn this into this? Okay, let's B. Let's see. We're given an array of length n. We'd find the equality of the arrays, the number of indices, such that <coughs> this equals the next one. So this will, yeah, so either it's zero or we're going to have to remove all of these. Yeah, okay. D, cyclic rotation. <coughs> so this operation is quite limited. It's basically just, um, yeah, we take duplicates and we move them to the right. So you can move yourself to a thing that copies you to the right. So any element that doesn't have duplicates can't get moved. It's a bit hard, but we can probably do it. Tori's so got it wrong, but we can get it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, what was A? I forgot. <laughs> A was this one, okay. <laughs> We're brave. We are officially <laughs> doing this. I think it's gonna be a bit, bit tight, but we should be fine. Let's go to C. Um, yeah, C is easy. So we'll have the size N. 
Not totally confident in this? Okay, should be fine then. Cyclic rotation. Okay, can we just go from the back, see if they match? We'll ignore duplicates, maybe that's just easier. I think this is fine. People are gonna be looking at my submissions, they're like, man, it took David 35 minutes to get A. Dang it. Okay. That was wrong for like two different reasons. Don't even know how it passed samples, honestly. But they did. gonna look at this should we look at the standings it's kind of funny okay so we're doing terribly oh my goodness only minus 12 dude we can actually like crush this and then we'll run samples if it doesn't pass dang it okay can I see the results I don't have an answer of zero. That's not true. Turn. in the world. F1, F2, Zigu Zagu. Oh, it's because they're a... Uh... Okay. <laughs> now I feel dumb. <laughs> All right, because Ulimri is only a duck. Over all permutations, we use CF handles. Good question. Or good answer. Yes. I've I've realized that. Thank you. I'm gonna submit. Okay, that <laughs> indicates it's right, but I have no idea why. Okay, so now we need a hard problem. All right, so uh, we can do F2, or we can get H, which is so many more points, and totally unrelated to F1. We could be rich, we would be rich with points. Everybody's getting H, everybody and their mother's getting H. All right, well, we're nobody's mother, but we might be able to do it still. <laughs> Seems way too easy. Re answer pre test three, pre test passed. How many? Twenty seven. All right. Dang, dude. Dang. LGM level performance right here, boys. You know it. I'm a boss. I can't tell you how good it feels to be beating Omnic. I mean, not that Omnic's got anything on me anyway, but. Uh, all right, yep. Yeah. F2 is the rest of the contest. Nice, easy strategy. Okay. <laughs> This is how I spend my contest time, ladies and gentlemen. Spend the first hour taking a shower, or the first half hour of the contest taking a shower, and the middle of it putting a duck image on my screen.
Ah, dang it. Why? Ah, oh, come on. No, but I wanted to get it right. <laughs> and you gave me wrong answer. I wanted it to be right answer. Nope. Nope. Couldn't do it. But, had a good try. I was just working on D2, or on F2. Cause like, I think I'm quite close. But, I am 2232 right now, plus 173. So that's 23, that's 24. Yeah, I'm back there again, right again, right? Let's go! I think I did it. Yeah, there's a hundred point difference between these two. So yeah, look at that. Wow. What a contest to get red in. Let's go! Oh man. Whew, well, that was cool. That was fun. That was fun. So there you go. That was global round 20. So my work has this program where they'll give you like three copies of certain books if you want them. And the books are all designed to be like kinds of books that would make you better at your job, improve your personality, get you better at programming, stuff like that. So I got one of them recently. I was kind of on the fence about it and I read the reviews and uh, a lot of them were negative, but they were written with an attitude I didn't like. So I'm like, I don't like any of you people, <laughs> and I'm going to try reading this book anyway, see what it's like. Now, in hindsight, I don't like the book at all. I don't think it's a good book. I think it's poorly written, um, and it's unnecessarily vulgar. They throw a bunch of curse words around just for the sake of doing it. So I'm not going to recommend the book to people. But one of the things it does talk about is it says, in a lot of people's lives, when you look back on your life, a lot of the defining moments are the times when you kind of put aside the, the fact that there was some risk at the table. And you're like, you know, I know doing this might be painful, or it might hurt, or, you know, it might not be the safest option, but I think it's like the right thing to do. And those are the things that you remember years later. Now, I don't want to say joining this contest was like a risky thing to do by any, any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there are certainly lots of people who do a lot more risky things every day. But uh, the expected payoff of competing in this round was certainly lower than the expected payoff of competing in a round where I started on time. So starting 30 minutes late isn't, you know, I can just not do the round and then I won't get any rating positive or negative benefit. And in hindsight, I am incredibly glad that I chose to participate. Not only do I get an extra whole bunch of rating points, and I get a better color on my name, um, but it's a great story, you know? It's like the story of how I earned red back, and how I did it, in very surprising circumstances, on a round that, you know, I was this close to just not participating in. I think that's pretty fun. Anyway, um, additionally, I would like to say thank you to Smax, Prasant21, Blizznetic, and Nerf This for all congratulating me very quickly after re-reaching Red. I'm sure there are lots of other people who, who have as well, but at the time I'm making this video, uh, I just felt that it would be nice to, to say thanks to you. All right, and with that, I think it is time for the question of the day. On my Div 4 speedrun video, somebody asked, are there going to be any upcoming second thread Code Forces rounds? And I've thought about this quite a bit. The answer, short answer is no. But the long answer is every time I have a really good problem idea that I think would make a good, you know, solid Div 1C, Div 1D um, Code Force problems. I mean, I can come up with lots of, lots of easy problems. Those aren't too bad. But the, for the harder ones, when I have a, a really good idea, I'm always kind of conflicted on how to spend that idea. If it's an interesting, solid, new problem that I think fits into a good category well, I always feel like it would be great if I could teach people this using some sort of, you know, algorithms thread lesson, kind of like the Grim Treeper problem. It's a great problem, in my opinion. Uh, it uses some, some existing techniques some somewhat well-known techniques, but it does it in a very educational way, in a way that I don't think anybody else has ever used before. But I wanted to use it in, in teaching people treats. So I couldn't use it for a Code Forces round, because that would kind of spoil it. 
The other thing is when I come up with some good problem that's very ad hoc, so it doesn't fit into that category, I feel like it would be a really good Hacker Cup problem. And since I'm one of the, the Hacker Cup authors, I would feel very bad taking away from the quality of Hacker Cup in order to make my own personal round on Code Forces. And then finally, it just takes a lot of time, right? So there's only so much time I have in a day. I have to devote some of it to making videos like this, some of it to editing these videos, and probably most of it to, to like actual real work that I get paid for. So, and like, I also have personal projects I want to do, right? So, you know, the question is like, at the end of the day, is it more helpful to people to have videos like this or to have another problem setter when we already have a bunch of very good, talented problem setters out there? Um, and the decision that I made is hopefully I do a good enough job at these videos that I'll stick to these and stick to the educational stuff and um, I'll leave the, the competitive challenges to the people who are quite good at those. Um, though that's not to say it'll never happen. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you had a great couple contests recently, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.